Hey y'all, I'm Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another garden tour. So it is February. It's just the beginning of Feb. Well, it's the middle of February. And we have our first set of tulips in bloom. I planted two varieties after chilling them last January. Chilled them since November, planted them in January. The first set is up and starting to give us blooms with our pansies. A lot of our other spring flowers are putting out leaves. Spring technically starts here, March 10th. So next month, hopefully we will have a lot of color, but the pansies and the tulips are always our first sign. And I say always because I see them, all the other pretty yards, but this is my first yard with them in bloom. So I'm very excited. We're going to start around the corner and I will show you all of our updates with our winter sewing projects and the milk jugs. And then I will give you a full tour of our early February blooms throughout the garden. And with the new cyclamen we planted down the way. Let's get started. All right, so we are down by the milk jugs. And as you can see, did a whole video on adding new seeds to the milk jug army planted six different varieties of cosmos zinnias alyssum and marigolds from seeds i got at walmart excited to see how those do but an update to the ones we've been growing our milkweed is doing great starting to get the second leaves so exciting these I just planted yesterday, so we won't have anything here. We do have a few of our short zinnias from the first batch growing, but not many, like three. <laughs> the tall zinnias, on the other hand, are already putting out their third sets of leaves. They're doing fabulous. And one glorious foxglove that survived the frost is doing the best but all the brand new re-sewn baby foxgloves are putting out second sets of leaves so they are coming along some are bigger than others we also have a very impressive uh, weed in this one because of course the weeds gonna have way more growth than the plants we planted our sugar baby watermelon are already we didn't have this much growth till may last year and it's february so i am really excited for these all of these are brand new i will link to that video below these are all brand new and then it's just our gomfrina little lizard friend so many little lizard friends they help keep the bugs good bugs good and bad bugs gone so we invite all the lizard friends i'm really excited about these purple raspberry gumfrina see what they look like so here we go and i've already promised you guys that i will not be planting any more milk jugs we're at the end of the season for milk jugs so whatever grows here is what we will have then our hydrangea here still not putting out any leaves our butterfly bush is iris still got to get compost or pea gravel down here it's, it's a mess this side we have no leaves on the butterfly bush and plenty of leaves on our hydrangea because why not be opposite and our knockout rose is just loving it. It's already putting out buds and new growth. As well as our Peggy Martin rose, which has grown a lot. And I need to work it through the fence a little more. I want it to cover this entire fence eventually. Our one, oh, it's so shady right now. I'm sorry, guys. One milkweed plant from last year is putting out new growth. So that's exciting. And our raised reds, I think we're going to get our drip installed this week and fill these babies up so we can plant our watermelon and a bunch of our cosmos and zinnias when they're ready. 
and these beds. Likewise, I bought some clematis for these guys this year since I'm not growing my watermelon and uh, cucumber on them. And then we have our climbing rose. That was not supposed to be a climbing rose and he is putting out fabulous growth. So that's good. Hoping he blooms really pretty this year now that I've got him staked up. And the three gara around the rose are putting out fabulous growth, whereas our three that have done well for us the last two seasons um, are not doing anything. So are they a different variety and they're just not up yet? Or are they dead? Did the freeze kill them? And I need to replace them. Because that's a lot of growth compared to none. I think they at least be green. The cone flowers, I have a lot of cone flowers in here. Um, haven't really started to green up yet. They're later summer flowers. They typically don't start to green up until the gara even has blooms on it. So, you know. Then our tulips. So all of these tulips, these are supposed to be a purple and pink tulip variety, but they are up. They are blooming. They have way more colors than they were supposed to, but they're beautiful. I am not complaining. And these ones here, the two purples, were the first two to bloom in the garden a week and a half ago, and they are still going strong. So I'm very happy with the bloom's lifespan on them. Then we have daffodil bulbs coming up that I planted two years ago. They did not come up last year. And they are coming up now. I planted 30 of them around this ring. Or maybe I planted them last year. So we will see. And here's a hydrangea that is putting out leaves. So that's what it's supposed to look like, y'all. <sighs> so exciting. Oak leaf hydrangea is still too early. But our lambs here are looking fabulous. And this Laura Petalum is looking fabulous. He's got a couple buds down on here. He's... These are the ones I moved last year that weren't doing so good down in the shade garden and they are much happier here. At least this one is. The other two I'm still not sure about. And some more tulips that I planted. Oh, this shadow is gonna be the death of me. And uh, more tulips up here. See that orange? You're not supposed to be any orange, so you know. I also bought some more rolls of drip tube. This is 100 foot rolls. I'm going to replace all the soaker hoses with drip irrigation this year. I think my beds will be much happier for it. I went for drip irrigation. I only ended up with two plants, so I think I deserve a medal or an award of some kind, but I bought some white African iris. They have these pretty little white and blue blooms all over them. I have some blue ones like this that I really like down here. I'll try to put a picture on screen of what the blooms look like. But I loved them. I got them from a lady on Facebook Marketplace and I'll probably divide them down the road, but I wanted some more. And when I saw these white ones, I was like, ooh, that's a good price. They were only $8. Pansies are still going strong. All our ranunculus, still very leafy, still very happy. I have no idea when they're supposed to bloom after the leaves come up. So it feels like they've just been at this leafy stage for a while. So I went ahead and I put some fertilizer around them last week because I didn't fertilize them when I put the corms in the ground. Hoping that will help a little. And then look at this. Look at these Veronica's. They are so green and leafy. I really think those are gonna do well this year. Our foxglove up here is coming in. And then of course all the lily bulbs won't come in till later in the season, but we're going to plant a whole grove of our foxgloves that are currently in the milk jugs right here. And right behind our fairy bird bath right here. All foxgloves, won't that be pretty? So this section right now, we have lots of the second wave of our irises, irises, tulips coming up. So these will be up hopefully in the next month or so. 
cleaned out all the lands here. You can see lots of iris that we planted last year coming up. Look at that little baby iris leaves. So those may or may not bloom this year, but at least they're growing. Um, and I think, I think these are champagne elegants that I planted five of right in here that I had all the same. They are a rebloomer and they are all the same as opposed to typically I buy them in a big pack of iris that are all like a mix. And these are all this pretty peachy, pinky, yellowish champagne color that I got from a lady on Facebook Marketplace. But they're supposed to be a rebloomer, which means they will bloom in the fall and in the spring. So hopefully those will do well. And then our one poppy that survived the frost and we planted out is doing well. And hopefully uh, we will see blooms on him before it gets too hot. Tulips have, look at all these buds. Look at all these buds. And yes, another medal for me. I finally cleaned out my bird bath. I have not refilled it because I figured it was supposed to rain yesterday and the rain would refill it, but I deserve a medal. I clean out my bird bath. I have not done that in like a year. Then we have more of these baby tulips coming up. So this is all second round. The second round are all supposed to be straight pink tulips. But, you know, the first round was supposed to be purple doubles, so I guess we'll see. And these cotton candy pansies that I planted here and here. I planted one flat of those. I split them between the two places, and I love them. I only planted three flats of pansies last year. One blue, one burgundy, and one cotton candy. And it's given me, you know, color since last November. So I totally think it was worth it. It was like 80 bucks for all three flats. I could get more, I'd keep going. This side of the garden has less because I typically concentrate all of my winter color around the front of my house, but we've got our blue pansies. You guys know I had my ornamental kales and cabbages here and they all died in that freeze. But the salvia that's here, the blue salvia, is starting to green up. Look at all those little green pops. So we will have more flowers coming in soon. And then I usually will put a couple, well just one, they get huge, um, Super Tunia Bubblegum Vista from Proven Winners right here. And it's just glorious. So as soon as the stores start putting those out, I'm going to get a flat of them, put them everywhere. They typically will overwinter in our area and come back year after year. And you can see in my protected window boxes, they are coming back. I just cut all these back. This is a Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum Pink by Proven Winners. Super Tunia. They're beautiful. They're coming back in all my window boxes, but the ground here, the ground here, the ground up here, this part must have gotten too cold. Down by my other bird bath that I cleaned out, second metal of third metal of the day, not buying a bunch of plants at Lowe's, cleaning out the little bird bath, cleaning out the big bird bath. I'm racking up the points. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. But uh, the super tunias down here are also starting to come back. So hopefully it's just a couple that won't come back. If I can buy a flat and put them aground, that'd be great. Our ranunculus down here are also leafing out. I don't know when they'll bloom, but hey, whenever they do, I'll be happy. And here's more of those second wave of tulips popping through the soil. You can also see right back here. Foxglove coming back. I have more foxgloves coming back on this half. Foxglove right here coming back. So we will have lots of foxgloves this year, which is what I want. I just want foxgloves and iris. And I really like things with tall spikes of blooms. I don't know why. And glads, I did. I planted maybe 75 glads last year. I bought another hundred. We're going to put them around. But, uh, 
iris. These are all iris right here that will come up. And then right here, in between this one glad stake is one, two of the flag iris, like the white ones up that way, and these are blue. So I'm trying to decide. I should have planted one blue here and one blue down there, but instead I planted them side by side to try to grow together. And then I negated that by planting stuff in the middle of them. I'm very smart. I have to take away a metal. So now I'm, I'm down to two metals again. So now I can either repeat this with my two white irises down here, or I can just plant one white iris down here, wait for it to get bigger, and plant the other one down here somewhere. Or secret option number three, go back and buy more. Then I'll have to give that metal back. Secret, secret option number four is after I bought those two, mom said she has a similar variety that's been growing in her garden for a while, a couple years. So if I can convince mom to give me some cuttings from hers, then I don't need to buy more. Here is our super tunias that are coming back down here. Look at that. I don't think I had five of them planted right here. I don't know that all five are coming back, but we'll find out. We do have one, two, three foxglove, two of our mums, and our pretty, pretty tulips. And, <laughs> you know, we just planted these from the bag, but somehow most of the yellow blush and orange are down here, and the purple are all that way. They are pretty though. Like orange is not my color, but in the spring, when you have no color for so long, any color is my color. The Nandina are still fire and in red. I cannot wait till these bushes get big enough to really take up some space because they will get bigger, but just planted them this year. This is where the three Laura Pedlum that I moved down the way were. They just they couldn't handle the shade and they were still around this size as opposed to these three monsters planted all at the same time. These three are giants and the other three were still so tiny. So, you know, sometimes you just got to move stuff. But butterfly bushes here, greening, greening up. Got, uh, I think this is salvia right here coming up. Iris. Yeah, that's the salvia because I have two spots down here. One with salvia and one that I usually put a super tunia in. So this where the tulips is, tulips is, that's not English. This where the tulips are is where the other super tunia right here was last year. And it does not look like he's coming back. So we'll probably have to put one there. But I have so many cosmos and zinnias growing this year may not need as many, but look at this box glove, box glove, box glove. So many of the baby, I planted a bunch of baby fox gloves last year. They're biannuals, so they didn't bloom last year and they're coming up giant this year and they will bloom for us all season. It will be glorious. And then you guys have been hanging out with me down here in the shade garden and it doesn't look like much yet, but we have done so much work. So here we still have our Jacorma peony. We planted a bunch of baby lupins out that we grew from seed in the milk jugs. We planted a whole grove of purple cyclamen um, tubers and our pink cyclamen, which are doing okay. It was quite cold the last two nights down to like 33 and they don't like going below 30. So we're losing a few blooms that aren't happy, but look, they are still pushing new blooms. So they will be fine in the long run. We just need to let them establish themselves. And then our peonies that we planted two weeks ago, this is a Sarah Bernhardt and look at that growth. That's ridiculous makes me so happy. 
Our foxtail ferns that got eaten by the freeze are coming back. Cyclamen, peonies, the whole mix. More iris, peony, peony, lupins. We've got five or six lupin plants right in here that we planted. More tubers, peony tubers. Hopefully be peony plants for us. But this is going to be a very pretty area if all of these things work. We have tried so many things down in this area with annuals like begonias, and they just haven't worked. It gets way too much shade down here. The lupin, I planted one lupin down here last year, and it did fabulous. But it was a plant. Can't buy 12 million plants. So instead, I started a bunch from seed. They seem to be doing well. And our two peonies we planted down here last year did well so you know we are just going to stick to what's working and instead of trying to reinvent the wheel we're just going to keep adding the things that are working likewise our one hydrangea that we planted down here this this guy was a twin to the big one on the other side of the porch the big big one and he is just he's fine he grows he blooms he's just tiny in comparison. Iris, I think I'm going to take this hydrangea out, not hydrangea, hibiscus out. This was supposed to be a pink hibiscus and it is a white and it's only given us one bloom in two years. So we'll see if he comes up and blooms this year. And if not, we might put some iris there or something because we did plant a giant, well, it will get giant vitex here last year to kind of I want something that will soften this corner because this is like awful and just give us a little bit of a vista in front of the trees, but mainly soften this corner so that when I'm looking over here, this is not what I see. I want a big, pretty bush to fill in. And I don't remember, my mom has two Vitex and they get huge. So let's see. Yeah, quickly reaches 15 to 25 feet tall and wide. So as long as he likes his spot, he will fill in and give us beautiful green and purple blooms and just soften this whole area. So I am love, love, loving all of the tulips coming up this month. Cannot wait for the second half of the tulips. I also have muscari and alliums that I'm seeing green on, but that have not broke through the surface. I'm just seeing green when I'm planting other things and I'm kind of under the surface a little bit. We are putting up green shoots, which means next month we're going to have so many fun spring plants coming through the surface. And hopefully the March shore will be fabulous. But compared to last, last February, we really only had the lambs here. So I am very happy with the progress and the growth and gardening takes time. So, you know, don't expect to plant something in a day or in a year and just be happy with what you got. I am. I'm thrilled. I cannot wait for next month. I think this year is going to be the best year in the garden yet because there are so many things finally coming into their own. They always say, what? First they creep, then they sleep, then they leap. Third year is supposed to be the best as far as beginning gardens go. So I'm excited. And with our army of milk jugs, I think we've got even more potential than we could have. So I will see y'all in the next video. Got plenty to do this week, getting those raised beds ready for spring. So if you want to check that out, I will leave a link on the screen here for when we built the raised beds. Of course, I still have to build the other eight, but you know, the first four were still fabulous and we'll see you over there. Bye.